In terms of redefining women, that means that there is a current definition. What is that definition? Um, you know, that is a very interesting question because we are what is called dimorphous. We become in two species and the woman is distinct from the man. So if you were to give me two brains, if you were to give me two brains and I didn't see the body, I can say this is male and this is female. Um, if you were to take a, a particular part of the brain and you were to give me one type of cell from the brain, I can just use that one cell and say this is a woman and this is a man. So we are not just different in the way we are shaped in our bodily parts. We are distinctly different in the brains and that's how we react and we relate with each other because of the way we are different in the brain. So you're actually seeing physical manifestations of that difference? Yes. But what, what would some of them be? Well, a man is wired differently from a woman. And when I say wiring, there are ways that brain cells connect. So a man is wired to be more aggressive. He is wired from front to back. So a man acts very quickly. The woman, on the other hand, um, she is more wired from left to right brain hemisphere. So a woman can think, that's why women can be more manipulative. They could be more emotional because they, they, they are wired more, more profusely. They have more brain wiring. They also have more gray matter than men. The man's brain is bigger than a woman's brain. It's, it's, it's bigger. A man is wired for directions. So there is a special part of the brain, the amygdala, that a man can actually, we are wired, we have an internal GPS system. If there's traffic down the road, our brain knows that. And that's why sometimes you say, you know, something told me not to come this way. That's because your brain sees and knows that. A man is wired better for direction. And that is why men are designed to be leaders, because they are wired to be leaders. You make him feel bad about myself, <laughs> Dr. Even I don't think I'm checking out some of those boxes, you know. But uh, what, does, but what does that mean, and I'm bringing it in just now, Ms. Myers, but what does that mean for people who are looking for, for championing equality in the workplace in terms of trying to have more women in leadership positions, on, in boardrooms, and, and these sorts of things? What does that mean for them? Um, I am a well-educated woman. I'm a professional woman, so you know that I do value education, I do value leadership, but I do believe in traditional male-female roles because we are wired for that. That's the, way, that's the way your brain is made up and you function better that way. I, if I got into a car and I had a, a male with me, I'd give him the keys, you drive, because I know his amygdala, his amygdala is better able to, man, to manage me through the traffic and take me from point A to B. Okay. And Ms. Myers, what is the Free yes. Woman Foundation about? Well, the Free Woman Foundation is a non-government organization. We reside, we are based in San Rio Grande, and the Free Woman Foundation is designed to help women find workable, doable solutions to life issues. And Dr. Kanerik kind of gels and her theories and her um, what she does gels with what we do. Because we believe, we look at the anomaly between men and women, the relationships we're hearing about domestic violence, we're hearing about abuse. And we have this in that we are missing something and so we want to be able to share with women in the first instance um, understanding who we are as women and being able to take it from there and work our relationships better um, manage ourselves better and to be able to to move forward in the business of living so that we're able to impact our families we're able to impact our communities in more positive ways and that's what the foundation is about how do people find themselves to the foundation? Is it a matter of referral? Is it a matter of you see someone on the street and say, hi, do, do you need some help in this, in this regard? They are referred by others as well as we do work programs in the environment so that we would, um, we would uh, advertise those, we would tell people and, and sometimes it's like each one tell one. So we, we have focused our um, service 
mainly in the Sandy Grandy area. And um, you had mentioned, the, we talk about the commerce a little bit, which is kind of broadening the base and trying to extend our reach beyond the Sandy Grandy region to, more, to, um, to be able to facilitate more women and to be able to assist more women. So just before you speak about that reach, yeah. in terms of contact, how do mm -hmm. people get on okay, if, they hear, if they're hearing or seeing this now? We do, have some, do, we do have some telephone numbers that they can call, and we can have those numbers shared with them as we go along. I can share some of them with you. You can call 796-8623 or 2944178 or 7632309, as well as we do have an email address, freewomanfoundation at gmail.com, that they're able to communicate with us their interest in being able to to participate in the event that we're having coming up on Saturday. And that event is? That's a Free Woman Festival, a one-day women's conference at the Arima Banquet and Conference Facility. That's on Susano Street in Arima. It's just opposite the town hall. And the, that we start from 10 o'clock in the morning. We go to 3. We have a, a program where Dr. Kanerik is going to be appearing. She's our featured speaker. We have one or two guest artists like Vanessa Briggs that people would know um, who would be performing for us. And then we do, we do have a workshop where Dr. Kanerik is going to go into a little detail as to how you deal with the issues of domestic violence and abusive relationships and help us to translate that into a, a winning situation then. She's going to just give us a little tip. Beyond the conference, we're going to be having several workshops thereafter throughout the year where we're going to get down to smaller groups and where we'll be able to help them by conferencing as well as physical um, interaction with them. It's always nice to have yeah. that one-on-one -on -one as opposed to yeah. just getting the information. Yes. Yes. But yeah. Dr. Canary, are we able to address this issue or this problem, this situation, just focusing on women? And I ask that question because in the paper today, there is an article saying that we've had 66 male suicides for the year. Uh, but are we able to make that distinction and address the problem just focusing on, on women solely? And that's why it has not worked. That's why the existing system has not worked. Because it focuses on women and it bashes men. Um, domestic violence is an aberrant behavior. It is a maladjustment. Mal adaptation of the brain. We are wired for survival. So our first instinct is to procreate, have children, and to perpetuate ourselves. If the worst criminal is walking down the streets and he sees somebody about to be hurt, he's going to react because we are wired to protect life. So anytime somebody turns on themselves or they turn on others, it's telling me that something in the survival pathway of the brain is not functioning. Now, we, I want to talk a little bit about women. Women are better communicators because I said we are wired um, across wise on the brain. We go left to right and we are better at verbal skills. Men are not very good at verbal skills. Um, it's not that they, they don't have verbal skills, but we are more wired for verbal skills because we nurture, we tell the children we love them, we talk to the man properly, and we let them know that they, they're important to us and we love them and we want them in our lives. We are wired for that to nurture, whereas a man is wired to be aggressive and to act. So when a person is functioning in a way that he is functioning outside of that protective element, it is telling me that his brain has turned into itself. Just one, one, one minute. When a man and a woman sleep together, one of the things that is produced is a chemical called vasopressin. Vasopressin is a, is a chemical that makes a man want to protect his family. I call it the sitting hen um, chemical. You know, you can't go near to a sitting hen, it's going to run after you because it's protecting its young. So there is vasopressin, and the vasopressin protects the woman and the children, the offspring. Even if you slept with a woman just once, that vasopressin kicks in and you create neural connections at atomic and subatomic levels, so you have this protective element towards the woman. When you see a man turning around and uh, abusing that woman, it's telling me that something is going on with the vasopressin and the vasopressins, the receptors 
in his brains. Uh, we don't go into our brains and, and create those damages. It means we want to heal those damages so people don't keep turning on themselves and hurting themselves and their family, including suicide. So men must be included in the dialogue. It's a place of compassion. It's a new perspective, and it's a place where we are saying, we understand where you are, and we want you to be the best that you can be. Vasopressin is what makes a man a successful businessman. That's what gives him that savviness. So you want to, to develop that because when you develop that, instead of it being turned on the family, it goes out there. You're not attacking the world, but you are attacking the world with aggression so you could be successful for your family's sake. Are there other ways, or oh, even before I ask about the other ways, you speak about damage to the brain, damage to the receptors, damage to some of those connections. Can those happen over a period of time, even before someone is conceived? I'm wondering whether or not some of those connections can happen. So the way that we say we've been bred into situations, we've learned these situations even before we've been here, is yes. that possible? Yes, yes. The fetus in the, in the, the, fetus in the womb um, receives information from the outside. So information is coming into, the, into the, the, the womb. It's not just what your mother thinks, it's not what your father thinks. It's coming in from the atmosphere. And the child in the, in the fetus grows, sleeps for a long time. You can actually see brain activity. So the, the child is sleeping, he's growing, but he's getting messages from the outside. So we need to be very careful what we, what we surround ourselves with. And that's a very interesting point. That predisposition, to turn into oneself is usually laid before the child is four years old. How can we fix, is it possible to repair this? And I say that because we have systems that people go into, they say they're not necessarily working the way we want to, but if we see these manifestations of a person, does that mean that the, 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 the damaged goods, how do, how do we fix it? Well, one, we have neuroplasticity. Just to answer a little bit about the brain, I said it's laid before the age of four, definitely, definitely by 24 months it's laid, those kinds of pre predispositions. And that's when we lay our su survival skills. That's when we tell the child, don't go there. The child learns the fear or he learns um, flight or he learns to fight. So that's the time we are laying the foundation where the child is likely to be turn out to be an abusive person or not. They might tell you, well, I was in a bad relationship, but actually that is laid in long-term memory by the, child, by the time the child is 24. Can we heal them? Yes, we can heal them. And that's because we have one neuroplasticity. The brain knows how to rewire itself under the right kind of therapy. And we also can go back. We have two types of patterns. We have gen genetic type, and we also have phenotypes. The phenotypes are the behavioral choices. We can go ahead and we can repair some of the phenotypes. Um, they're also like, some people take oral oxytocin. Oxytocin is a bonding chemical. Oxytocin is produced when you have intercourse. The more sex you have, the more prolonged the relationship is, the more intimacy, the more romance that goes into it, the more um, caressing and so on, the more oxytocin you, you build. Well, if a man has high level of oxytocin, he would not look at another woman in the eye. Research has shown that. And speaking of research, I, I want to ask this question of Ms. Myers. We have single parent households where that parent is a father. Mm -hmm. Can that person actually get some help, some use, avail themselves of some of the resources of the Free Woman Foundation? Certainly. And as Dr. Connerick said, we're not dealing, though we primarily target the woman, we have not left out the men because we understand. We want to build family. We want to build relationships rather than, in other words, um, there's a song Tina in her, I don't want to fight anymore. <laughs> and that's where we're at because it has not helped us. It has not helped society. And so we want to reverse. You mentioned um, the issue of can we deal with it if it starts in the womb. So one of our primary target groups are young women, um, childbearing age between 18 to 35, who are raising families to help them do it differently. So they respond to their children differently. They respond to childbirth differently. And if they understand, so we're doing prevention. 
and we're also doing intervention. restoration intervention. Right. How, how available are you to people? And I ask that question yeah. because sometimes mm -hmm. someone can go to a conference, they can go to a seminar yes. and they get all this lovely information. <laughs> but then two days down the road, they have a question that didn't come up then. So it's, and, and then some, the experience of some people is almost as though you get a meal on Sunday, but on yeah. Tuesday you're hungry again and people say, remember how that meal on Sunday was? So how, yes. how, how do people contact so you? So we are it? available. We do have the numbers again. Um, 294-4178-796-8623 and 7822309 as well as our email address freewomanfoundation at gmail.com. So once people call in or they email us, we, they would get an early respondent to whatever and we arrange for meetings and to be able to intervene with yeah. them. Yeah. There's an Adinkra symbol and it <laughs> it's, the name of it is a Coco Nan. It translates to the the hen treads on the heads of her chicks, but she does not kill them. In terms of discipline and the role of discipline mm -hmm. as it pertains to what it is you do, what can you say to that? Um, discipline means you train someone to respond in a particular way. Um, it doesn't mean that you take a whip and you beat them all the time. Um, in fact, that very rarely works. Um, discipline is again training the brain to be responsive properly to situations. So, um, as I said, we said earlier on that women are natural. She has male children, but they are wired back to front. They are wired, when I say front to back, which means back is where you, you act, it's the autonomic re region. Prefrontal is where you think, emotions, act. So men will think, bypass the emotion, and act and say, you know what, I didn't even think about what I was doing, because that's the way they're wired. The nurturing center of women is in the emo emotion area, the, um, that, that area in, in the center of the brain. One of her functions is to train the men, her boys, to process from cognition to emotion to, to action. That's what nurturing does. So when you see young men or older men moving from cognition to emotion to action, it is telling me that during the nurturing process, that part of the brain was not developed properly by the nurturer. Make me feel like I need a cat scan after this week, but Ms. Maya, is you going to say something? I was thinking that often we don't know. And uh, all of this is new to us. It, it was not active. Some things were done just by road with our parents and so on. And somewhere along the line, it was not transferred. And then with the understanding of what training is and discipline to be. And so we train up children to be what they ought to be. And so there's, there's the, the, the challenge that older women need to teach the younger women. The older men need to teach the younger men. And because that has not been happening consistently, children, both male and female, just come up without understanding their maleness, their femaleness, and how to function in the world. We want to address those issues to ensure we have better men and women functioning in the society.